military has not done well in stabilization of foreign states. And there was a period of, of hubris in, uh, in Iraq and Afghanistan. But there was also considerable recognition by the military that it needed the State Department. And the whole idea of a civilian surge, which didn't work very well because we didn't have enough diplomats, was an idea pushed by the military, which was very frustrated when we couldn't find diplomats. By the way, military has looked for diplomatic help in wars since 1848, when General Winfield Scott in Mexico asked the State Department to send some diplomats to help govern the areas of Mexico that were under military occupation. And the State Department didn't have enough people that it has regularly failed to meet these military expectations for 100 plus years. Uh, because it does not resource to have, the, not because it doesn't want to, because it's not resource to have the people. Uh, but the notion that the military alone can do these things is, I think, is profoundly misplaced. Um, the efforts at stabilization in peace negotiations in Africa were largely diplomatic, bringing to an end the civil wars in Central America was a diplomatic effort. Um, and bringing wars to an end increases markets and expands trade and diminishes risks to Americans. Now, holding, the, holding the Soviet Union in check, containment, was a policy that was both military and political, diplomatic. So you had the military in NATO, but all over the world you had this balancing between the two, perhaps exaggerated, but those were basically political actions.